All right, so today I have another car for you. I am inspecting a over here. Toyota FG Cruiser 2007. So if you don't know much about cars and you're looking into an FG Cruiser like this one, uh, I'll show you here some steps and tips that you can take uh, while you're t testing your own or, or inspecting your own uh, car that you're expecting to buy. So it will help you at least get a fair deal and uh, know what you're buying so first on the list i have the exterior condition this one is fairly simple make sure there is uh, enough bright light uh, on the paint so you can take uh, go around the car take a look make sure everything looks aligned between the fenders and the doors and the panels uh, <clears throat> in this case I'm not too happy about the gap uh, between these two panels however it seems okay no it seems that this side is a, a way bigger I can put my finger in but here not as much so there is a different gap on both sides could indicate something let's just leave it aside and keep looking small scratch but 2007 car it's normal okay otherwise look at the tires Make sure there's enough uh, gap and that they're not cracking. This one looks good. <clears throat> Although it looks a bit uh, inflated, missing some air. Mags, here the mag is scratched. Um, <clears throat> all the wheels seems like they missing the center cap. I do believe there's something that should come over the bolts over here but <clears throat> otherwise on this side it looks good missing the uh, uh, valve cap it's not a big deal this one looks all right okay now on the side where I found a big gap if I look closer I can see that there is a clip missing over here so I'm quite certain that something happened on this side probably a crash I don't know if it was major or minor on this side the clip is missing as well frame has some surface rust but nothing major you can always turn the wheel so you can have a better access in order to kind of look uh, at everything now using my camera only I can see that this plate over here is broken on the, on the bottom of it it's also minor, but uh, it's interesting that I can only, only see it using my phone. I can't actually see it from outside. Uh, everything else looks in order. Let's look at the other side. Also turn the wheel to get a bigger, uh, a better access. <clears throat> look at everything, even if you're not an expert. Uh, you can still see that like, like this seems fairly clean so you know that the outer tie rod has been uh, changed so you know that at least there is some new parts on the car 
uh, somebody uh, took the time to maintain whatever that's always a good sign okay so next I would look at the windshield the wheel the windshield seems good but I already noticed that you know this car comes with three wipers on the uh, on the up front but there's one that's missing oops sorry three wipers one two and one is missing over here so that's it's not too expensive but why why isn't it there that's a good question uh, otherwise the windshield seems good with that i am going to go ahead and mark the exterior condition as checked next is the engine condition for this step all you have to do is start the car and listen it seems like there is a little bit of exhaust leak coming from somewhere under the seats I'm gonna open the hood there is some kind of rattle noise it doesn't seem like it's I'm not sure it's from the engine it could be it's hard to tell it could be the lifters it could also be a pulley um, but there is definitely a noise that is not usual uh, check under the car if there is any leaks but no nothing seems to be dropping on the floor there is no smoke uh, so uh, other than the sound that uh, I'm not comfortable with everything else seems good now that the uh, hood is open, take a look. Now that's interesting. I turned the car off because I found something interesting over here. You can see that there is some homemade uh, welding on this part of the radiator support. What is supposed to be the radiator support. Um, you can see on this side, it's also bent. And missing a bolt over on the plastic over here so there's definitely an uh, uh, that's that concludes there's definitely an accident that happened on this side um, <clears throat> is it a major problem this welding I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it's okay it's definitely not on a major part but Personally, now it's gonna depend on the prices. I like it or not. Um, I can see the plastic cover of, of uh, the engine. First, it's not sitting, maintaining on in place, and it's broken. Somebody is using a, a <clears throat> it's tying up the battery in this kind of way, which is not the most beautiful way. The filters, however, seems new, so the oil has been changed recently. Okay. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, I can also look under the car. Let's see over here. Now, there's coming of... Uh, here, as well, I can see that uh, it has been welded and that the weld is rusting that, that's not good you can see on the other side it's normal over here everything looks normal on this side uh, the part that has been welded is rusting out i don't like this and otherwise it doesn't seem like it's leaking oil anywhere however 
if I was buying the car, I would stop there. <laughs> However, <clears throat> so, but anyway, we're gonna go on with the test. So the hood doesn't close properly in a single clap. Also, not a good sign. Maybe something in mis is misaligned. You can also look at the rear differential. I can see there is a lot of surface rust, which isn't too scary. Uh, I can see also see that there is no oil dropping, no oil um, that has dropped before. Everything is dry, that's good. Okay. Here, I just noticed there is the, this uh, plastic light broken. And with that, I will end the engine condition. Let's go now for the interior. So start with the door. Look at the fabric everywhere. Move on to the seats. I can see this one uh, torn. Everything else, the, the roof panel is uh, dirty. You can see it over there, over there as well. So there's, it's also turned on the back. This car also, I believe I should be able to open this door. Yep. To have a better access, I can, seats are dirty. Let's look at the back. Missing cover. This car, okay, okay, you can see here as well. It seems like it, the, this car also has been rear ended. There is kind of a fair gap between the bumper and this um, chassis. It's not too, it's major, major, but. It's a good indication that the car has probably been into a, a, a crash from the back. I believe so. It's does not, not supposed to come like this with a big gap. You can see that I can you can see my hands on the other side. Okay. So moving on. Let's here we have a rust on the door step. Uh, which indicates that somebody, uh, a lot of going in and out from the car, it's normal. It only indicates that the car has been used fairly. Try opening the windows. They work like they should. Try the wipers. Wipers work, but it's not splashing water. So maybe um, there is missing water. However, on the dash, it doesn't tell me it's missing water. Windshield water, so that's one thing. In the back, it's, work, it's working, so that's good. With that, I will go ahead and say that the interior has been checked. Next is the test drive. So, take your time, test the car, make sure you, you drive it enough uh, so, the, so it heats up to normal uh, temperature. Um, this one has the manual uh, 4x4, so take your time uh, to test it, change the, the 4x4 gear and make sure it uh, works as well right now. I am on 2x4 Drive it in city drive it uh, in highway Make sure make sure the car uh, doesn't wobble. There is no vibrations test the brakes Test the 4x4 don't forget it. This is important sometimes it doesn't uh, Engage so now I put it into 4x4 I can see here that I have the 4x4 light on, but the VC, VSC off as well. I, I don't think it's supposed to be off. 
when I put it on 4x4. Anyway, let's try it. So 4x4, I can feel the star. The car is uh, stiffer. I can feel it uh, grabbing uh, better on the snow. So I'm, I'm pretty convinced the 4x4 works. No problem. Anyway, I'm gonna put it back in 2x4. All right. If the salesman um, or the seller uh, insists on being with you on the ride, make sure he stays quiet as much as possible and turn off the radio. You want to keep, uh, you want to be concentrated to make sure that you hear all the noises and uh, really take your time. Now, <clears throat> Don't forget to use the uh, Google to verify any uh, common issues on the car you're looking at. <clears throat> For this example, we have uh, drivetrain problem, vibrations, oops, um, shaking st steering wheel, loose foot rest pedal. So uh, all the kind of stuff that are easy to check, um, mainly using uh, during your test drive. So it's important to make sure that the car you're looking at doesn't have those main issues. With that, I'm going to say that the test drive is done over here. Next is the mileage. So you've driven the car, you have inspected exterior and interior, you inspected the, en you inspected the engine. So now you have to have kind of like a, a a fairly good idea about the mileage in this case it says a hundred thousand and honestly in my opinion this car has a lot more than hundred thousand I am not convinced that this is the right mileage not at all the paint is not that clear, uh, beautiful the car uh, on the step over here you can see the rust that uh, usually comes uh, by rubbing your boat the, your boots on it and to get that amount of rust, you really have to go in and out a lot. Uh, and the, the main condition, the overall uh, interior, it's not that clean. The exterior, there's a lot of damage. So I don't believe that this car only has 100,000 uh, kilometers on it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and mark the mileage as checked. Next is the VIN ID check. This one is very important. You want to make sure you're not buying a stolen car because when the police finds it, they will take it back uh, and they won't help you get your money back. So first thing you have to do is find the VIN plate, which is usually located, on, uh, always located on the driver side. Uh, try to remove it with your fingers. It should not be removable and this one uh, seems legit check the number the VIN number compare it with the one on the windshield which is in here in this case it's very hard to see there's a lot of dirt so I can't see it even without the camera I cannot see it and but I can kind of feel for the letters and for the numbers over there so anyway, it doesn't look like it has been tempered with. It looks very old and dirty. I don't believe this car has been cloned anyway. So I will move on and say that the VIN has been checked. Uh, next would be the cluster lights. For that test, you want to turn off the car and put it into accessory mode without starting the car. And look for all the lights, <clears throat> make sure they're, they're here, check engine, oil light, everything looks here, VSC track, VSC, slipping, IBS, everything is there. So I know that at least if there was a problem with the car, uh, the, the lights are available and working and that can, they can show me there's a problem. When I start the car, all the lights turn off uh, I can see on there is only the airbag on so 
It could be since the accident, they didn't uh, fix properly the airbag system. Uh, this is the door, this is the seat belt, I didn't put it on, and the gas, missing some gas, that's normal, so every, everything else looks good. Now, this test is useful because sometimes the seller will uh, remove the cluster and they will manually go ahead and break the LED light behind the tank engine so it doesn't light up and in which case you will never know if you have a problem with the engine or anything but in this case it do it looks like the cluster hasn't been tampered with so that's good we'll go ahead and we're going to mark the cluster as checked so here we are at the end of our test uh, in general I do not like this car so if I was the buyer I would just walk away I would tell him you know what it's not exactly what I'm looking for and uh, thank you for your time uh, since the most the most impo uh, important problem with this car is the engine which has the rattle as uh, some kind of noise coming I don't know exactly where but I don't want to know I don't want to figure it out um, <clears throat> it looks it, it definitely did went into an accident and was repaired uh, in a very cheap way which isn't a big problem uh, depending on what price you're getting the car uh, that, that that really depends on the price uh, <clears throat> otherwise it's clear that it doesn't have hundred thousand kilometer based on the average actual condition of the car I don't, I'm not convinced so uh, I hope a video like this uh, is helpful for you uh, be careful when you're buying cars for because th one <clears throat> this is a good example of what you should not be buying um, and well, good luck in your purchases.